Hello all my friends at Scioto County Daily News. My name is Aspa and today we're going to be talking a little bit about social media. The rise of social media use is a phenomenon that is sweeping the globe and fundamentally changing the way that we as people interact with each other. Something interesting about social media is that it isn't targeted. At this point, almost everyone, regardless of age, is using social media in some way. However, the way that it has been adopted varies widely across different age groups. Today, I want to talk a little bit about how teenagers are using social media. So, here are five of the most commonly used social media apps among teenagers and how they're usually used. Number one, YouTube. YouTube content, unlike TV of the past, is pretty unfiltered. Though there are some restrictions, for the most part, people can post whatever they want and they can film it themselves. So for that reason, there's a lot of different types of content on YouTube, and the primary consumption of YouTube by teenagers is just watching this content. We've seen the rise of vloggers, which is people just like you and me sitting and talking to a camera. There's also sketch comedy, drama channels, there's all sorts of different content that kids like to consume on YouTube. The second most common way that kids are using YouTube is for studying. There are all sorts of free study materials on YouTube, and it's basically like having a tutor just sitting right next to you. A few of the common ones are Crash Course with John and Hank Green and The Chemistry Tutor, but there are a bunch more depending on what you're looking for. Other than that, there is a small fraction of kids who are on YouTube who actually make videos like this and post themselves on YouTube so other people can watch. That being said, most of the kids who use YouTube are just using it to watch YouTube and don't really make any content to put out there. Another great way that teens are using YouTube right now is to just learn different skills. The whole concept of adulting is a daunting one, so having the internet to kind of help you out is a really great resource. A lot of my friends use YouTube to learn how to cook, learn how to make crafts. One of my friends even learned how to change the oil in her car from watching a YouTube video. So a really common use of YouTube is to just learn different skills and trades. Number two, Instagram. This is probably the most traditional social media in that it follows the structure of Facebook and MySpace and those sorts of social medias of time past. This is a social media platform where teenagers tend to put their best foot forward. It's the most curated of your life. It's the best of the best, the parts that you want everyone to be able to see. Instagram is a social media platform that is used the most for networking. People want to amass followers on Instagram for the reason that it's, again, that best foot forward. So it's often used for different things, especially when you're in college or high school, when you're meeting new people, you want to show them your Instagram and follow them on Instagram because it's not quite as personal and it's the nice parts of your life, so you want that to be the first thing that other people see about you. That being said, there is another type of account people create, which is called a Finsta or a fake Instagram. And it's kind of just that stupid, silly content or maybe that more personal content where kids only let their closest friends follow them so that those people can see what's going on in their lives. Number three, Twitter. Now, where Instagram is kind of that more curated version of your life, Twitter is quite literally just the post everything that you think. There are a lot of different subgroups on Twitter, but for the most part, when kids are putting stuff out on Twitter, they're just kind of putting out whatever's going through their head. The most common consumption from Twitter is probably, one, news. A lot of kids use it to just like kind of figure out what's going on in the world, and things go up on Twitter very quickly, so it's easy to find headlines that are really relevant and things that are going on by the hour. It's also a much more consumable place for news because there's an inundation of media and the timeline moves so quickly. However, it can also be dangerous because that's kind of where you see a lot of the just reading the headline but not reading the article. It's also where a lot of fandoms exist on the internet, which is basically just the concept of really, really loving an artist or a band or a movie or a TV show, anything like that. This is where a lot of those people band together to really enjoy those things and talk about them. Number four, Snapchat. Now, Snapchat is primarily used as a messaging app to send things back and forth. The appeal of Snapchat is everything disappears within 24 hours and the messages or shots that you send, once someone clicks on them and clicks off of them, you can't see it anymore. Unless someone screenshots it, but you also get a notification, the sender specifically gets a notification that it was sent. 
Um, however, Snapchat has found itself at the center of a lot of controversy, specifically with scandals using nude pictures and child pornography. Because a lot of teenagers have a hard time understanding that when they send something, just because it's not there anymore, doesn't necessarily mean that it's disappeared forever. There's also the use of Snapchat stories, which is basically used for just like silly everyday things, a lot of times to show people what you're doing or where you're at. Again, this disappears within 24 hours. Snapchat also has a section for news, and this is used for all sorts of different kinds of things. Typically, what used to be consumed through magazines, that's the kind of content that goes on Snapchat. So things like Cosmopolitan, Elite Daily, and BuzzFeed News are all kind of featuring their own Snapchat stories, and they're really clickable and consumable. This is where a lot of teenagers specifically spend time wasting their life looking at the same three pictures for hours on end. Number five, TikTok. Now this is the newest one on the scene and probably the most difficult for people outside of Gen Z to really grasp. Now a little bit about what TikTok actually is. It's very similar to the concept of what Vine was before Vine disappeared and it's mostly used for little dances or singing, lip singing, or little scenes. It's a lot of short content and it is the definition of viral consumable content. A lot of things go viral and then other people mimic it or parody it or make responses to it and then that goes viral. This is where a lot of kids probably do the most producing of their own content and like I said, things become really big really quickly. That's kind of a lot of people's goal when they're consuming and when they're producing content for TikTok is to go viral or be TikTok famous. It's a pretty big thing right now. However, it's not as awful as people make it out to be. It's not as damaging. It's mostly just a lot of kids doing silly dances or making content with their friends. So what are we really using social media for? 90% of it is just harmless and it's fun and it's a good way to keep up with what your friends are doing. There definitely is that really toxic aspect of comparing yourself to other people and becoming addicted to it and just constantly needing to know what's going on on your phone and if it's better than what's going on in real life. That's the point where it becomes necessary to kind of take a step back and really see the world around you. Admittedly, it's difficult. And a lot of kids growing up today really don't remember a life before social media. It's really indoctrinated in the way that we socialize with others. That being said, it's important to remember, social media is a tool. Just like any other trend of the past, it can be used positively or negatively, good or bad. There is nothing inherent about social media that makes it this godsend that some kids think it is, or just this devil that a lot of parents seem to think it is. It's really just in the middle. It's however you choose to use it. And as I've voiced, there are a lot of positive and negative aspects towards social media. I hope you enjoyed this and it was a fun and informative video on one of the biggest cultural shifts of the decade. That's it for today. Keep an eye out for my next video. See you soon, Scioto County Daily News.